From the macabre minds of Laughing Devil Production comes another story from the Nightshade Diary. You know what that means. Check under the bed and make sure no one or nothing is there. Is the closet door securely shut? Then leave your disbelief behind, amp up your imagination, and hang on tight for another ride into terror and mystery. And like all good horror stories, just imagine it's a dark and stormy night. And remember, screaming like a little girl is permitted. Midnight at the Crossroads and Other Creepy Stories Our first story is titled The Missive. I was out of town for the weekend and when I came back my mailbox was full of envelopes and I realized that at least 20 of them were letters. And the strangest thing of all is that they didn't have a return address. Some of them felt funny and damp, as if a liquid had been spilt over them. I also noticed that my name and address were written in red ink. And worst of all was the smell, which was like rotting garbage. I really thought twice about taking them into the house, but curiosity got the better of me. And I placed them in the kitchen sink, just to make sure that I didn't get whatever had been spilt on them, either on my person or on any of my furniture. I decided to open one that seemed to be drier than the rest. There were pictures inside and of people I didn't know. I turned the envelope over just to make sure it was my name on the envelope, even though I already knew it was. I wanted to tear my eyes away from the pictures, but I was horribly fascinated by them. I didn't know any of the people there, but what was most disturbing was that they had teeth missing, unhinged jaws hanging open, and eyes that had been gouged out. Some also had their throats ripped out. I looked back at the sink, wondering if the rest of the letters had the same thing inside. I had to know if they did. I opened them and found more photos, worse than the first envelope. There were piles of bodies with missing body parts, and another had a corpse splayed out on an operating table, with bloody organs spilling outside of them on the table. There were other photographs of bodies hung up which had been gutted and bled out. Each envelope that I opened just got worse and worse. It was then that I realized that I was making the letters wet was the drying blood and the body fluids that was why they smelled so horribly. I couldn't stop myself from opening the rest of the envelopes. And then my level of horror went up a notch as I realized that some of the people pictured were not strangers anymore, but people I knew. Some of them had been students with me at school. Other were co-workers. The last few letters were the worst because inside were pictures of my close friends and family. All of them had been horribly mutilated. It was then that I noticed that there was only one envelope left. As much as I tried, I could not stop myself, and my hands trembled as I slowly tore the envelope open. And inside was a picture of me, smiling and coming into the building where I lived only a little while before I collected the mail from hell. Then I heard it. The low almost imperceptible sound of a door opening in my apartment. A few seconds later, I knew that someone was standing behind me at the entrance to the kitchen. And all I had to do was turn around. My legs trembled so much that I thought I would fall. And I felt like I was going to throw up, but then it all went black as I passed out. Narcissa's Nectar 
If you ever find it, you'll ask, what is it? It's called Narcissus Nectar. And it's something that you've looked for all your life, but like all mysterious things in life, it doesn't come with instructions. But that's because it's pretty easy, at the beginning that is. First of all, make sure all of your affairs are in order, just in case you're one of those people who have a bad reaction and end up taking a dirt nap. From there, it's straight to execution, so bottoms up. The next month, it's not so bad, you realize later on. You'll experience bouts of nausea, and keeping food down is almost impossible sometimes. Then you realize that you really don't need it, which is why you were up chucking everything you ate, you just don't need food anymore. The need for sleep also evaporates. Then one day you stare at your arm and you realize that your veins are standing out more. And when you cut yourself slightly, the color of your blood is not that red. Then parts of your body start to grow in inside of out and the other way around, like around your ears and your teeth and your fingernails. Oh yeah. I forgot to mention that if you hadn't gone in for your checkup, you should do it. And just make sure you get all your shots too. Don't worry if you feel that wearing a trench coat in public is the best. It's understandable. You don't want to reveal what's going on with your body. Everything that's going on with your body. Now, don't wig out when you get a little cut on your belly that instead of healing just starts dripping pus from it. For the next week or so, more pus will start coming from it. And then you're going to see what looks like a greasy little smooth black egg that has a couple of teeth growing from it. Yes, I said teeth. But there's an upside to this. When you're dead, someone else will find it and use it to make a new batch of Narcissus nectar. Hide it and think of future generations. One of them. Late at night, and it doesn't have to be midnight. Walk over to a flat open area where you can walk in a straight line for a couple of minutes without running into anything. Once you find a spot, face the direction you're planning to walk in. Keep your arms at your side and your hands relaxed. Then close your eyes, take a deep breath. Then at nine minutes and 20 seconds later, start walking. You might need to use the timer on your cell phone for the exact timing on this. It's very important. Now, you need to take a step every second, no more and no less. And don't open your eyes and don't hesitate or stop. Count your steps in your mind as you walk along. On the 111th step, say the word one. Out loud and stop. Suddenly your breath will stop and your hair will stand on end. And for the next 10 seconds, you will be unable to move not even a single muscle in your body, no matter how hard you try. After the 10 seconds pass, you will then be able to breathe and move again. But then you will start to feel a sensation of cold metal claws tightening around the base of each of your fingers just before they're sliced off you hand you suspect. You'll be horrified, but it won't hurt. And whatever you do, don't open your eyes and don't move. If you move or open your eyes, the only thing left to identify you will be your two fingerless hands with cleanly sliced stumps where your arms used to be. Once the sensation of the claws have stopped and you feel that all of your fingers have been pulled off, Stay still for another 10 seconds. Counting helps. Only then can you open your eyes. First thing you do is to look at your hand and you'll find all of your fingers are attached. After this, go home immediately and go to bed. And whatever you do, don't speak to anyone for the rest of the night and don't go into any building that is not your home. By the next day, you will be one of them. Once per day, as long as there is any daylight left, even a little bit, and you point at someone and say the word one, that night that person will endure the same trial you did, 
and the next day that person will also be one of them. And if not, then don't be alarmed if you don't feel hungry for the rest of the day. Just remember, you're still one of them. Something at the window. It's a Monday night, rainy, cold drizzle coming down. The wind is chilly. You sit in your favorite armchair with a blanket wrapped around you and you have your favorite show on TV. The volume is barely up and it just makes a dull murmur against the pressing silence of the house. The lamp next to you has burnt out two of its three bulbs and even that one flickers on and off ready to finally fizzle out and leave you in darkness. You really don't know why but you feel this urge to look out a large bay window right next to you but you see nothing and then you just start playing your favorite music in your head hoping it'll distract you from the feeling that's been gnawing at you for the last few minutes you know that feeling you get when someone's staring at you you can't help it that feeling comes up again and you look out the window and then you hear it the tapping against the glass like someone trying to get your attention tap 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 you turn the volume up on the TV but the tapping becomes louder more insistent refusing to be ignored tap 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 and all you're thinking is it's only in my head it's only in my head I'm just nervous I haven't gotten enough sleep and then all of a sudden it stops you start watching TV watching those same sappy commercials with happy families and puppies when you hear that one sharp tap against the glass. That's it. You have to look. You're scared, but you're even more curious now. And so you look expecting to see a tree branch hitting the glass. But instead you see a long, pale white tongue drag across the window, making another tapping noise as it smacks back against the glass. Time comes to a stop and so does your heart when you see two large white eyes bulging from a long and narrow face scarred with cuts and burns. The face is inhumanely long and out of proportion for a normal person. And then a part of your brain that still works realizes it's upside down and holding onto the overhang of the roof outside the window. As if in slow motion you see its mouth is lined with razor sharp teeth pointed jagged and brown with rot saliva drips from the ends its cavernous mouth seems to be smiling like it knows something you don't midnight at the crossroads there's a certain road near the Everglades in Florida which if you drive down alone in the rain day or night you will suddenly have a very eerie feeling of being completely lost. Your radio will turn to static, your CD will skip. Anything that you're listening will start to play slower than normal. If you try to find a map in your car or on your phone, you just can't find it. Nothing works. If you continue forward down the road for more than a minute, you will find that you can't turn around and everything behind you is pitch black. There are no other roads and no other cars. Continuing down the road, you will come up to a fork with no signposts. In the middle of the fork, there will be a man. He's covered head to foot in various pieces of clothing. The only skin visible will be around his eyes, which will be bright, bright green. They stand out in the darkness. You must get out of your car but do not turn it off or close the door after you. You must approach the man, but stop at least three feet away. You must stand there silently, waiting for him to speak first. If you speak first and break that silence, you will find yourself back on a main road, but you will die within 24 hours. If he speaks first, he will ask you what you require. Tell him that you need to know which road will take you to your destination. He will then ask you what you will offer him in exchange for his assistance. If you offer him a ride, 
he and your car will disappear and you will become the new guardian of the crossroad. If you offer him an umbrella, he will take it and stab you through the chest with it. If you offer him your love, he will take your heart still beating from your chest and eat it before you, condemning you to walk the earth without a heart, insane from the pain and loss. You must offer him your loyalty and kneel before him. If you do this, he will close his eyes and bow in return, extending a hand to whichever path will lead you back to safety. If you try to run from him, you will be dead before you reach your car, and your body will be found back in your car in some random location. The Enticer One school day there was a boy named Martin. He was sitting in his class doing math, but he really didn't like that subject. And he knew that the school bell was going to ring in just a few minutes, ending the school day. As he was working on the project in front of him, he decided to look out the window. Something caught his eye. Because his desk, it was right next to that window. And what he saw aside to make him gasp because it looked like a picture. A portrait. When it was came time to go home that the bell rang, he ran outside right to the spot where he had seen it. He wanted to do it so that nobody else could grab it. And he found that he picked it up and smiled because it had a picture of the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. She had a dress with tights on and red shoes and her hand was formed into a peace sign, you know, like a V. She was so beautiful, he wanted to meet her. So he ran all over the school and asked everyone if they knew her or have you ever seen her before, but everyone just said no. He was devastated. When he was home, he asked his older sister if she knew the girl, but unfortunately she also said no. Eventually it got late, and so Martin walked up the stairs, placed the picture on his bedside table, and went to sleep. In the middle of the night, he was awoken by a tap on the window, like a nail tapping. For a minute, he got really scared. But then after the tapping, he heard a giggle. He saw a shadow near his window, so he got out of bed and walked towards the window, opened it, and followed the giggling. By the time he reached it, it was gone. The next day again, he asked his neighbors if they knew who the girl was in the picture. Everybody said, sorry, no. When his mother came home, he even asked her if she knew her. She said no. So he went back to his room, placed a picture on a desk, and he fell asleep. Once again, he was awakened by a tapping. He took the picture and followed the giggling. He walked across the road when suddenly got hit by a car. He was dead within minutes, the picture in his hand. The driver got out of the car, tried to help him, but it was too late. Suddenly he saw the picture and picked it up. He smiled. He saw a cute girl holding up three fingers.